In this video, I want to talk about a pretty critical update that's coming down the pike for the Ethereum platform because this is an upgrade that's going to happen that can actually affect the price of Ether. And we just saw some news come out about this on some updated timelines about when this is going to happen. So I'm going to talk about that in this video today as a blockchain developer who works with this technology on a daily basis and also an Ethereum holder myself. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you will learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So what is this big update that's coming down the pike for Ethereum? Okay, well, this is EIP-1559. And if you've been watching this channel uh, a lot, you've probably heard me talk about this quite a bit. This is one of the most requested topics that people want me to discuss. I'll explain what it is here in a minute for everybody that doesn't understand it. But the big picture here is we actually have an updated timeline about when this is going to come out. So we'll talk about that here in a minute. But just in case you're brand new, like what is EIP-1559? Well, basically, this just stands for Ethereum Improvement Proposal, which is basically just how Ethereum goes through an upgraded process, okay? So don't forget, Ethereum is a blockchain that's in this transition period from Ethereum 1.0 to Ethereum 2.0, and the protocol can actually be upgraded. So right now, we can have EIPs that go through this process of actually changing how the network works. So EIP 1559 isn't exactly part of the Ethereum 2.0 roadmap per se, but what it does is it changes how Ethereum works right now with miners. It changes how the Ethereum fees work, and there's a lot to how this works, but one of the biggest things people talk about is how ETH transaction fees get split up into multiple parts, a base fee and a minor tip. And basically, the base fee can get burned whenever the transaction is created. And this could cause Ethereum to become deflationary at times of peak network activity, which could impact the price of Ether. And we'll outline that in detail here in a second, what I think is going to happen to actually to the price of Ether once this goes live. So that's a pretty quick update on what EIP 5059 is. So when is this going to come out? Well, we just got a big update from Tim Bako, who is a core contributor for the Ethereum protocol. You can see him appear regularly on the uh, all core devs meetings for Ethereum. But actually, just got done watching this video over on uh, this YouTube channel, Son of a Tech. You should definitely go subscribe to that channel if you haven't already. It talks a lot about Ethereum mining in particular. And of course, EIP 1559 is a pretty relevant topic for people who are mining Ether right now. So Devin, go check out that video. But he interviews Tim Bako. And now the updated timeline is sometime in late July to somewhere early mid-August. So we could see this get pushed back a little bit. This is kind of typical for these types of upgrades for blockchain protocols. And this doesn't necessarily worry me or anything like that. I don't think this is a scam that just keeps getting pushed back further and further and further. I know some people worry about that in crypto because this is pretty common. People say, hey, we're building this amazing thing. Come give us money. And then they just never deliver. I really don't think that's what's going to happen right here. I think the actual nature of this is that it's an insanely complex thing to implement. And you have to basically fix the airplane while it's flying. And this just takes longer than you think it's going to. Anybody who's built technology for real will know that it's notoriously hard to estimate how long it's going to take to, to complete something like this. And multiply that problem 10x when you're talking about blockchain technology, particularly blockchains that have real world users on them right now, securing billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of value. All right, so let's talk about what I think is actually going to happen to the price of Ether based on this update. Because again, this is something that actually affects the economics of how the Ethereum supply or Ether supply actually works works. So let's talk about what I think is going to happen to the price of Ether whenever this goes live. Okay, so basically think about it this way. You know, if I send Ether from my account to yours, let's just say that you uh, you know, send one ETH, then you're going to send your Ether amount plus, you know, a fee for that transaction. And just for example sake, let's just say like 000.01 ETH, right? Some really small amount. This isn't the exact number, but let's just say it is. Well, this transaction fee is going to get split into two parts. So the base fee, all right, plus the minor tip. All right, so two parts, and then basically for EIP 50 and 59, this base fee can get canceled out. All right, so don't forget, also, whenever uh, you mine a transaction on Ethereum, whenever a bunch of transactions are included to a block, new Ether gets created on the network. That's because ETH has a hard-coded block subsidy that's always created whenever new blocks are mined. And so what could happen is if there's enough transactions going into blocks and this transaction fee gets big enough, then the amount of Ether that gets burned on this base fee could actually cancel out the amount of new Ether that's created whenever blocks are mined or actually exceed it. So if it exceeds it, then Ether could become deflationary at times of peak network activity. And if there's enough network activity on Ethereum over time, then it could become deflationary by nature. So that's why people think this could have a price impact on Ether because essentially it's changing the supply of Ether. It's actually reducing it. If the demand for Ethereum is at least stays the same, then that could cause the price of Ether to go up. So do I think this could have an impact on the price of Ether 
Uh, well, I definitely do over the long term. So if we come to a situation where there's more activity on the Ethereum network than there is today and less ETH is created, then just by sheer supply and demand economics, we can see that have a positive impact on the price of Ether. Now, we don't exactly know how much, but if you think about like Bitcoin's having narrative being a huge part in how, you know, Bitcoin increases in price, basically, if the number of Bitcoin decreases every four years, that's created when blocks are mined, it gets cut in half. And people think that has a deterministic effect on how, you know, what happens to the Bitcoin price, assuming that demand stays the same or increases, then you're seeing a very similar type of situation here for Ether itself. Now, over the short term, we don't exactly know what's going to happen because there's a couple scenarios. Let's assume scenario one is that, you know, this bull run just continues on and we trend higher in prices over the next few months. Well, there's a lot of hype around EIP 1559 right now. And this could be a thing where people are basically buying the rumor and selling the news. So people could be accumulating Ether up to this point, And then whenever EIP 1559 actually launches, they might just, you know, exit ETH altogether and take some profits, which would, of course, you know, make the ETH price go down. And so you're seeing less of an actual impact of that upgrade itself, simply because the demand for Ether goes down at that point in time. Because if demand dries up, then it doesn't really matter whether ETH is deflationary or not. And so let's look at some other things that could affect the demand side of Ether because again, EIP 1559 affects the ETH supply, but in order to actually have a positive price impact, the demand has to at least stay the same or increase, okay? So basically, you know, Ether at the time of recording this video is still on somewhat of a downtrend in price. So ETH would have to at least consolidate and range sideways for the demand to buy Ether as a store of value or a speculative vehicle, whatever it is. That would at least have to stay roughly the same in order for this to also have a positive impact on the price of Ether. And the time of recording this video, it looks like Bitcoin is trying to reverse some of its momentum and potentially lead the market. And if that, you know, flows down into Ether and ETH is able to break out of this downtrend and increase in price, then this could similarly have a positive impact on the price of Ether if the you know Ether price goes up because people are trying to buy it again for a speculative investment vehicle, store of value, it's using DeFi, whatever. So as far as actual utilization of the Ethereum network, you know we do see demand for that temporarily dropping a little bit, but that doesn't, it's not something that necessarily worries me. I mean, we're back basically to the levels that we were at the beginning of this year. Um, you know, we saw explosion of activity happen in Ethereum with, you know, DeFi summer last year. So we're still... Uh, you know, firmly in that area. I and mean, we saw a peak here happen and then kind of dip down and then come back up again. So I don't think like Ethereum demand is just going to totally drop off or anything like that. Of course, we see other activity flowing towards Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, you know, other scaling solutions for Ethereum, all that type of stuff. But we do see a temporary drop in the demand for the Ethereum network compared to where we were at these all-time high cryptocurrency prices. So in order for EIP 1559 to have this price impact, then this demand at least needs to tread water here and, you know, range about this same level or for it to, you know, continue increasing, which I think it will over time, given all the innovation and adoption that's happening on top of the Ethereum network, especially with, you know, layer two scaling solutions coming out in full force. I mean, true layer twos that actually settle the final result on the Ethereum blockchain itself. I think that's going to help, you know, generate demand for the Ethereum networks to get some of that activity back on the actual main chain itself, which will do that. So let's talk about the actual deflationary aspect of ETH because ETH doesn't have to totally become deflationary in order for this to have a positive impact on the price of Ether. As long as this is slowing the rate of new ETH produced, because it's still inflating the ETH supply at a lower rate. Now, that being said, it'll have less of an impact, but it still has some impact. Assuming demand stays the same or increases. Now, let's talk about the last big thing you need to understand coming up for Ethereum down the road. And we talked about uh, EIP 1559. We talked about these layer two scaling solutions briefly here, where this basically takes some of the activity off the Ethereum main chain, does it in a separate environment, and then, you know, settles the final result on actual Ethereum itself. That's a big development coming up down the road. But the last big one that you need to know about is the merge happening for proof of stake. So what is that? Well, basically right now, Ethereum works with mining. So if you want to include new blocks in the blockchain, you want to actually run it, then you participate in proof of work. This is called the Ethereum's consensus algorithm or consensus mechanism. That's how Bitcoin works. That's how Ethereum works right now. But we're moving to proof of stake on Ethereum 2.0. So uh, EIP 1559 isn't technically on the ETH 2.0 roadmap. It's kind of a separate thing altogether. It's really just an implementation for how ETH 1.0 is going to change. But for ETH 2.0, this is the long-term vision for Ethereum where we you know, get the blockchain ready for prime time, make it way more fast, way more scalable. Proof of stake is part of that vision. And that's going to happen and potentially at the end of this year or more conservatively at the beginning of 2022. So this would be a way where you can actually participate in staking the network with 32 Ether and earn a passive income reward for doing that. 
and you'll validate new blocks and help include transactions into the blockchain itself. Because the miners are getting replaced by validators in this case, and they have to hold Ether in order to stake it to help you know run the network that way. And so that's going to be the next big event coming up for Ethereum after EIP 1559, after these layer twos really take off. And that's another one that I think that the market is really going to be waiting in anticipation for. So that's all I've got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? We well, can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely, I can show you how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.